Hi guys, there was a big news story yesterday that the Crown Estate are offering up loads of new leasing opportunities for offshore floating wind in the Celtic Sea. And what this means is that there's about to be a whole lot more floating wind in the UK. Now at the moment, the most technologically advanced floating wind substructure is the high wind spa boy design. And what's really interesting about this is that this technology was actually developed for the offshore oil and gas industry. So it's really nice to see something coming from fossil fuel industry and being brought into this renewable sector. Today, I'm gonna to explain exactly how the high wind boy keeps the turbine stable in the water. When a body is submerged in a fluid, there's a buoyancy force. And this is just the product of the volume of the body which is submerged, the density of the fluid and small g. If we consider a floating body, we can say that it has a center of gravity and a center of buoyancy. And if this same body is tilted off its axis, we can say that the center of buoyancy is gonna shift a bit because the submerged section is no longer symmetrical. But the forces of weight and buoyancy will still act upwards and downwards. And this will give rise to a restoring force in this direction. The point where the new buoyancy line intersects with the old buoyancy line is called the meta center. And we can say that the distance from the meta center to the center of gravity is our metacentric height. If we lower the center of gravity, we can say that this metacentric height has increased. And this will give rise to a larger restoring force, making the object more stable. If a force hits an object and it's tilted, it may cause a restoring force. If it's tilted too far, the center of gravity might cause a destroying force. A spar boy has a low centre of gravity because it is ballast loaded. This means that the centre of gravity is below the centre of buoyancy, which means that whenever a force is applied, there's always a restoring force generated. And hopefully this shows how successful this substructure design can be. We can see this with the high wind boy. Studies have found that increasing the metacentric height does decrease the angle of pitch. And this is really important because even at 10 degrees of healing, the energy can be reduced by as much as 16%. Although this increased stability can come at the cost of shorter natural periods, which increase the chance of the turbine coming into resonance with the wave energy it's experiencing. If the turbine does enter resonance with the wave energy it's experiencing, it can be very damaging and cause a lot of wear, as well as reducing power output. As well as being filled with solid ballast, spar boys can also take on seawater ballast. This can be done to change the draft of the turbine, as well as to change the mass of the overall structure. Seawater ballast means that there's more mass beneath the surface, changing the structure's natural period to avoid resonance. Another method is to deploy dynamic pitch control, which can change the pitch of the blades to dampen the force of vibration on the entire system. Finally, mooring lines are used to add tension to the structure and stop it from moving around. This can also dampen the vibrations. Resonance, damping and dynamic pitch regulation are huge areas of interest for floating offshore wind because they have the capacity to increase power output which is what will make floating wind competitive with other forms of renewable energy in the future. One thing's for sure, and that's that floating offshore wind is going to be a massive part of the UK's future energy mix. So I hope you found this video useful. Just to recap, we've covered buoyancy, the metacentric height, and the stability of spa platforms for floating offshore turbines. And if you like renewables content, check out my blog. The link and all of the references for this video are in the description below. Thanks for watching.